Okay, the second part of the Newton's Laws test review will have to do with Newton's second law and free body diagrams. Uh, I'm going to have to use my writing tool, and it is not working really well, uh, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, forces are vectors. Forces can be in any direction. Uh, they can be in one dimension, uh, and in that case, we denote the sign, the direction with a plus or a minus. Or they can be in two dimensions, and then we would have things like north, south, east, and west, or a degree measure. Newton's second law basically says that unbalanced forces cause acceleration. Another way to say it is more mathematically with this equation, the sum of the forces equals ma. So this symbol right there, that is the Greek letter sigma, and it simply in math, it means sum or total or add them all up. So it is the sum of the forces, which we also call a net force or a total force that causes acceleration. So uh, what is net force? Well, if you have a 10 Newton force north, so we have a 10 Newton force north and we have a 4 Newton force south, what would be the total force? So 10 north and 4 south. Well, if 4 south, we typically let south and west be negative. So if I want to sum positive 10, I can't get a negative sign to draw there. If I, want to draw, if I look at my forces, the sum of the forces would be a positive 10, that north force, and a negative 4. And so the sum of those would be a positive 6. So it, the answer to this would be 6 north. Or let me say, let me get the units right, um, 6 newtons north. Okay, now if it's two-dimensional, it gets a little bit more tricky, and we have to do, use a trig. And I had my calculator. There it is. Let me get my calculator handy, because we're going to have to do a little bit of trigonometry. So open my calculator. Okay, so I have a 10 Newton force north, and... and a 4 newton force east. This is supposed to be newton and 4 newton force east. Now the nice thing about this problem, and it's the most difficult problem you'll have to do, is that these are already components. I don't have to find the components of these vectors like we did when we began, the, when you did the two-dimensional motion unit. So this is kind of a simplified version. The y component of this force is 10 newtons, and the x component of this force is 4 newtons. And so in order to find the sum, we simply have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So the sum, the resultant force, so I'll say fr for resultant, is equal to the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. These are twos. And for our problem, that would be 4 squared plus 10 squared. Well, that's the square root of 4 squared is 16, and 10 squared is 100, so the square root of 116. And I have my calculator here, so 116, and square root that, 10.8. Now, at, in what direction? That's the thing. We have to find that. So 10.8 newtons is the resultant. Now, if you remember back, I have to get a decimal in here. There. Well, okay. That's 10.8 newtons. Luckily, we have audio. So if I need to find the direction, that would be the angle. Remember, the inverse tangent of y over x equals the angle. So, on an inverse tangent, I have trouble with little things like dots and negative signs. So, the inverse tangent of the y component was 10, 10 over 4 equals, let me pick up my calculator, so 10 divided by 4 equals 2.5, and then inverse tangent. I get 68.2 degrees.
So the answer has two parts, just like when you did the um, two-dimensional two motion unit. Okay, so the answer is 10.8 newtons at 68.2 degrees. And you have to use trigonometry if you have two-dimensional vectors. But on the test, you won't have anything more complicated than this. You won't have like 20 newtons at 30 degrees and 50 newtons at 45 degrees. You won't have to find components and start like that. You're, you'll be essentially given the components. Okay. Um, what's next on our list of things? Okay. Newton's Law's calculations. Epic, you have to do three things. You have to, given mass and acceleration, find force. Given force and mass, find acceleration. And given force and acceleration, times um, find mass. So let's work some examples. Let's say if a mass of 15 kilograms experiences an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared, what will the force be? Well, F equals ma, and that would equal 15 kilograms times 2 meters per second squared. And as you can see, without having to use a calculator, I'm sorry, this is really messy, um, the answer would be 30 newtons. Now that would be the net force acting. If that mass has that acceleration, the total of all the forces acting on it must be 30 newtons. So now let's use this form. Let's say there's a force of 100 newtons, and it's acting on a mass of 20 kilograms. What would the acceleration be? Okay. So use that equation, acceleration equals F over M. So that will be 100 newtons divided by 20 kilograms. And that equals 5 meters per second squared. And then finally, if we have a force, let's say, of 200 newtons and it produces an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared what must be the mass of the object and here's our equation mass is force over acceleration so it's 200 newtons divided by 5 meters per second squared and 200 divided by 5 equals 40 kilograms. Okay, um, we need to talk about some of the forces. And we did this a little bit already. Uh, no, we did it. Yeah, we just, let me look back. I'm looking at my notes and looking at what we've done. Okay, so we've some forces that were in one dimension and we've some forces that were in two dimension. You'll need to be able to do both of those things on the test. Um, and we've done some calculations with F equals MA. And now we need to talk about um, free body diagrams. So uh, free body diagrams, remember, uh, we represent forces with arrows. The arrows start on the object and uh, always point away from it in the direction the force would cause that object to move. So if I have uh, a box um, sitting on a table and there's a person pushing that box, you know, they're pushing it in this direction, and there's a there's a frictional force in that direction. If I wanted to draw a free body diagram, I would use a dot, actually. I have trouble with dots with this drawing thing, so pretend that's a dot. And we would represent all the forces acting with arrows. Remember, everything has weight, so weight is usually your best bet to write in. And I write weight mg, you might write weight um, w. For weight, but since mg is how we calculate it, that's usually how I write it. And then there's the normal force acting up, and we write those arrows the same size because this object's not accelerating in that direction. And then we would write the applied force, that person is pushing with some force f, and then there's a frictional force, and we usually use a lowercase f for friction. So this would be our free body diagram for this situation.
Now, what can we tell from this free body diagram? This object is accelerating constantly, and it's important that you can tell both draw a free body diagram. I can't write an E. The, sorry. Acceleration. It's important that you can draw a free body diagram that is acceler showing acceleration and that you can interpret one. And this is a diagram showing acceleration. Well, how do I know? Because my applied force to the right is bigger than my frictional force to the left, and that means there will be acceleration towards the right in the direction of the bigger force. So this free body diagram shows acceleration. Um, uh, this would be an object. Um, that is um, moving, if it's moving to the right, and it is, this object is speeding up. So how could we slow, show slowing down? Well, suppose this person stopped, um, stopped pushing. Then what would the free body diagram look like? Well, we'd still have the normal force up, and we'd still have the weight down, but now all we have left is the frictional force. Now, in this case, I know this object is slowing because it's just from the situation we talked about, we know that it's still moving in the right direction, in, you know, to the right, G, moving to the right, but the bigger force is to the left. So if the net force is to the left and the object's moving to the right, then we know that that object is slowing down. Well, what, hap what if it's not accelerating? So no acceleration, all the forces. No acceleration, all forces are balanced. Like a normal force and a weight and a frictional force and an applied force, all the same length, that would be no acceleration because all of the forces are balanced. Now you can tell some things and use F free body diagrams or FBDs to solve problems. Um, I'm going to open up another page here. Suppose we have um, the example like we just did. We have a normal force up, and we have weight down, and they're the same. I can put a dot in here, uh, and we have a an applied force to the right and a frictional force to the left that is the same size. Um, we have forces in two directions. We have forces in the x directions and if we need the sum, the net force in the x direction, that would be the sum of the forces in the x direction, just be add up the forces in the x direction. And when we write that, F the applied force minus the frictional force because the frictional force is to the left. And in the y direction, the sum of the forces in the y direction would be the normal force minus the weight equals ma. Now this would be the y acceleration and this would be the x component of the acceleration. Um, again, nor the normal force is up and that's positive and the weight is down and that's negative. Um, so you can look at this and, and tell because the arrows are equal, the acceleration would have to be zero. This would be a, an example of not accelerating. So let's change the values here and let's say that the normal force is equal to 50 newtons and the weight is equal to 50 newtons. And um, the frictional force is equal to 20 newtons. And suppose I, um, I know that there's an acceleration to the right of two meters per second. And I wanna know, well, what is this applied force? What is this other force out there? You know what? I'm about running out of time on this recording. And so I will pick up right here on part three.